Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Luciana Kimmel and it's a pleasure to welcome you all to Let's Talk Flow. Our speaker today is Valencia Four, a technical application scientist from our amazing panel design team. And today's topic is antibody titrations. Now, before we get started, we do have a couple reminders. So your camera, your microphone, and your chat functions are disabled. But if you'd like to submit a question for our Q&A, please click on the Q&A icon on top of the screen. And without further ado, welcome Berencia. Hi everyone, thank you again for joining us for our first session of Let's Talk Flow. I'm Brantia and I'm gonna hop right in to talk about antibody titrations. So actually before that, I'm gonna briefly tell you what Let's Talk Flow is, then I'll get into the antibody titration and then at the end, it'll be your turn to ask your questions. So a brief reminder that Let's Talk Flow is a monthly meetup we are starting to discuss flow cytometry related topics. Our goal is essentially to equip you with valuable insight into the nuances of performing a flow cytometry experiment. And this is because when you're doing flow, there's quite a few moving parts. So we just wanted to make something that's easily digestible. Maybe it's a refresher of some of the flow concepts you've heard about, or if you're brand new, you can be exposed to these concepts and have the opportunity to ask your questions on the spot. So we encourage your engagement and because we wanna just help you achieve success in your experience. All right, so antibody titration. Um, titrating your antibodies is essentially the process of finding the best concentration to use for an antibody in your specific assay. And so when you're finding this optimal concentration, what you're looking to do is maximize the separation between your positive and negative cells. You want to be able to see your positives as clear as possible in your data. And you also want to minimize the nonspecific binding. So at high concentrations, um, the extra antibody might actually bind with low affinity to some off-target antigens on the cell. And so you really want to minimize this as much as possible. And then lastly, we're trying to establish the highest labeling efficiency of your antibody. And it's important to saturate that intended epitope. So titration is really critical for high quality data and the resolution of the populations in your panel. So when should you do uh, titrations? Definitely you should do them when you're starting a new assay. And also when any other things change up, such as you're using a new clone, you may be using a different lot of a tandem dye that's in your panel. Um, you may be exchanging a new fluorochrome conjugate to something else on one of the markers of interest. And um, you want to titrate again if you change anything in your staining protocol that might affect that binding capacity. So if you're changing any buffers, fixation buffers or perm buffers. And then also, you know, if your data is looking a bit odd, you want to consider did you titrate or go back and maybe perform your titrations again. So when you're thinking about how to titrate your antibodies, you want to first start with the stock concentration of the vial, and you can find this through the vendor. Um, and you want to determine a final staining volume and the number of cells you want to use and keep that consistent. Um, you want to maintain that those same condi conditions as your multicolor sample. So that includes you know, number of cells if you can, the temperature, the incubation time, any fixatives you're using, the FC block, as well as the viability dye. And um, just to call out for the viability dye, you, act, you wanna make sure you're including that into your titration so that you can remove any false positives and ensure that what you're measuring is the binding specificity to your target. And it's actually not the dead cells interrupting that. Um, another thing I wanted to call out is that uh, you should centrifuge your vial actually before you begin your titrations and this will remove any aggregates. 
Um, so essentially, when you start out, you want a serial dilute one to two. We recommend about six to eight dilutions, starting at a 10 microgram per mil concentration. And this will just give you a nice range because the more you do in the beginning, it'll build out your titration curve a lot better so that you can truly find that optimal concentration. Um, again, reiterating that you know, you're matching those conditions that's in your multicolor sample, and the only variable that should be changing is the concentration of the antibody. Okay, so after you do your titrations and you have all your data, um, you need to choose the correct titer, right? So on the left side, you see this titration plot. And on the y-axis, you're looking at uh, the intensity of the signal. And on the x-axis, you are seeing the increase in concentration um, in the concentrations that were tested. Um, and then on this slide, on the right side of the slide, you see this mapped titration curve of each of the concentrations. And the titration curve allows you to determine the saturation point. So this titration curve is built on a metric called the stain index. And the stain index is calculated by subtracting the median fluorescence intensity of the negative cells from the MFI, you can call that MFI, from the MFI of the positive cells. And then this is divided by two times the robust standard deviation of the negative. So most of your um, data analysis softwares of, the, of today, your, FCDF, your FCS Express, your Flojo, they can actually pull these statistics for you when you gate on those populations and they also can calculate the same index. So there are several templates and instructional, instructional videos from your software of choice. So if we go back and you know we look back at this uh, plot here, you may think, let's say on this area, this third concentration, okay, we have sep uh, separation, but why is this not a good titer? And so I just wanna reiterate that, um, again, one of the key outcomes of titration is that you're trying to find the saturation point. And so in that third uh, concentration, you see the separation, but um, you can see as you keep increasing the concentration, only paying attention to the positives, you're uh, getting a better saturation and you see the positive signal is more intense. Um, so the last two titers, you see that we definitely have saturation, the last two concentrations. We definitely have saturation, right? But this is not the only important thing. So you take a look here at the negatives, um, you're starting to see that spreading effect. And we don't want this because we're, uh, we can tell by our titration curve that as we increase this concentration of antibody, this excessive antibody in the tube is not actually improving our separation at all. Um, it's causing uh, issues actually with the spread of the negative. And so we wanna see these middle two here, this tight negative population. So again, translating this graph over here to the titration curve, once you start to see that plateau, that's indicative of the fact that increasing the concentration does not actually improve your titration. And I'd probably select this um, titer here because at this point you've reached saturation and you've also uh, reached a point where the negatives are, uh, the spread of the negatives are minimized. So visually, you know, you may be able to say, okay, it's between these two uh, concentrations on here, but you know, the benefit of having this curve is that you can kind of mathematically point out this optimal titer. So again, optimal titration is the one, or optimal titer is the one that gives you the best saturation of the epitope, high positive signal, as well as low spread of the negative. Okay, so we're talking about titrating antibodies, right? But when you are doing a, a flow assay, you may include other things. You should include other things, for example, a viability dye, but you may have something like a functional dye um, in your panel. And essentially anything with a fluorescent molecule attached, you should definitely titrate. So um, this slide, I'm just calling out the fact that you should uh, titrate your viability dyes. 
And essentially you see here at this concentration of live dead fixable olive, you see a slight spread of this negative cells. And this makes sense because the way these fixable dyes work is that they're binding to these amines on the cell, these amine groups. And so live cells do take up some of this uh, fixable dye, but you wanna find a concentration where you're still getting signal on the dead cells, but your live cells for instance, if you're um, running this on an aurora and you took this population and you looked at the signature, you want to make sure that it looks a bit similar to your unstained cells. You know, it won't perfectly match, but um, you don't want this fixable viability dye kind of intruding on um, your live cells. Um, and you don't want to worry about like that spreading error that could be introduced to the other colors in your panel um, from this fixable viability dye. So highly recommend titrating your uh, viability dye. And another point I like to make, like if you find that your sample maybe doesn't have a lot of dead cells, you want to make sure that um, you create a control or like a uh, sample that is a mixture of heat killed cells and live cells so that you can be certain there are um, both populations exist in that same tube. All right, so talking about titrations, right, this all kind of pulls into a broader scope of just what's happening with the antibody performance. And so along with titration, there are other contributing factors to antibody uh, performance. So these include the clone, which is giving you that specificity, um, the fluorochrome conjugate, also called fluorophore, or the color. Um, with that, you're taking into account the stability of the type of fluorochrome you're using. You know, for example, if it's a cyanin dye, cyanin-based uh, tandem dye, um, how prone is it to breaking down? Um, another factor is the cell type that you're staining and the staining protocol. So uh, a couple slides back, I was mentioning to use the same condition. So for instance, using different, certain fixed perm buffers work differently. So you might need a different con concentration uh, depending on whether you're using FOXP3 buffer or something else. Um, and so this, image that you're seeing is from a presentation from one of our R&D scientists, Seton Thomas. Um, she did a talk on special uh, spectral panel design considerations. And what she was showing here is that when she stained CD27 um, using this BUV496 fluorochrome, that even after increasing the concentration of the antibody, it still did not improve the resolution of that CD127 positive population. So it wasn't until she actually changed the fluorochrome to a brighter dye, and even you know, changing the clone uh, improved the overall separation in the positive and negative uh, population. Um, so this kind of culminates the bigger picture in the fact that antibody titration is a uh, part of a lot of concepts that need to be put together when you're trying to figure out this best separation for certain populations or certain markers of interest. And um, next month, we'll actually be talking about uh, the principles of assigning fluorophores and learning about brighter dyes, dimmer dyes, and how to actually put those together in your panel. Um, so, so yeah, uh, that's, that's what I wanted to show here. All right, so you know, going here with these key take takeaways of titrating your antibodies and what benefits it will provide. Um, you know, like I said, you're trying to really maximize the separation between positive and negative fluorescent peaks. You know, so your cells positive and negative population. That's where you're trying to find the maximum separation between. You're trying to minimize the non-specific binding in your sample, um, making sure there's nothing, finding any off targets or any cross reactivity. Um, you're establishing the highest labeling efficiency of that antibody. You want to make sure you saturate it because if you don't, other factors such as pipetting error, or little things like changes in temp temperature don't really affect as much your positive and negative separation if you ensure that your epitope is saturated. If the epitope is not saturated, um, 
you might find that there can be uh, influences that greater affect how well that separates. Um, so that's why it's important to make sure it's saturated. And also you can save money on your reagents. Oftentimes the um, concentration that's given by the vendor might be a bit higher than what you need. So if you do your titration, you might find that the efficiency of the assay is better uh, made in terms of the fact that you can uh, use less antibody and your vial will last longer for you. And then um, lastly, one takeaway I want to mention is that you can decrease and you need to decrease the introduction of spreading error into your panel. So you don't want all these extra antibody aggregates or this extra dye um, floating around in your tube or uh, binding with low affinity to things that you're not trying to target. And this really does inc uh, become increasingly important as you start to build out these high parameter panels. So um, that's pretty much it on the titrations talk. Um, so here, I just wanted to call out that, you know, we have a panel design surface here at Thermo Fisher. It's completely free. Um, and even if you have questions about a panel that you are currently running, you can reach out to us and we'll be happy to get back to you and answer your questions. But if you do want to build a new panel, expand a panel, the service is free. It's very fast. Um, uh, you can get this one-on-one -on -one customized assistance and, you know, we're not, uh, you're not tied to actually purchasing any antibodies to get the uh, drafts from us and we'll accommodate any antibodies you already have and even suggest some that you need. So um, if you need help, uh, I think Luciana placed a message in the chat. You can go there, fill out a form and we'll get back to you. All right. Okay, thank you so much, 